Anti-Semitism and racism are increasingly echoing in the hearts of Russians. From bold slogans we can repeat to manipulations on the subject of victory in World War II. And from the beginning of a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, some Russians moved on to undisguised calls for the destruction of entire states. Ukraine will become a secondary state that won't take part in anything, and we will take this land for ourselves. This Nazi carrion, you ask what we will do with them, destroy, and we won't ask everything that has to do with it. We didn't finish them off in World War II, we'll finish them off now. It needs to be wiped off the face of the earth. Whom, Ukraine? Yes. Why is it needed? What for? Poland, simply to the heap. The imperial ambitions of the Russians are fueled not only by propagandists on federal channels. They have been demonstrating military maps of the offensive against Europe for a long time and promising to incinerate it with a nuclear strike. Anti-Semitic and racist sentiments are also being voiced by the country's top leadership. A statement by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov about Hitler's alleged Jewish roots shocked the Israeli government. This is how he answered a question from a TV presenter of the Italian media about how President Volodymyr Zelensky could be a Nazi if he is a Jew. Israel is already demanding a public apology from Lavrov. Well, I think that Hitler also had Jewish origins. So it means nothing. For a long time, now we've been hearing the wise Jewish people say that the biggest anti-Semites are the Jews themselves. As we say, the family has its black sheep. However, one should not expect denials from the mouth of Lavrov, experts say. After the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia's aggressive policy has reached its peak. The official Kremlin is no longer shy in expressions and shows its true face. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation explained on its website and posted an announcement on social networks that literally says they paid attention to the anti-historical statement of Israeli Foreign Minister Wapid. There is such a minister. This is their official stance. It was announced that yesterday the Israeli Foreign Ministry summoned the Russian ambassador. Apparently, he was presented with a note and publicly we heard that they offered Lavrov to apologize, to take his words back into his mouth, but we haven't heard anything of the sort. Therefore, I do not see a reservation in this, not an accidental exaggeration. I think this is a change in Moscow's position. Some experts attribute such rhetoric to Russia's potential loss in the war against Ukraine. Allegedly, realizing its helplessness, the Kremlin is trying to keep its face, at least in front of an internal audience. They are well aware that they are losing the war and to create this aura that the whole world is against us and we are the only righteous people in this world. Obviously, this is a part of this technology. Everything else is irrationality. Because if Russia had sought rationally its leadership, they would not have started a war with Ukraine. Why are there so many people in Russia who want to exterminate enemies and use nuclear weapons against thousands of civilians? These are the consequences of decades of Putin regime's propaganda, experts explain. Almost a quarter of a century of this darkness of Putin's obscurantism and propaganda and everything that accompanies it, because Russia in its current form is a rigid authoritarian system with totalitarian elements. That is, it could be described as totalitarian, but there are still some freedoms that have not been yet taken away, like freedom of access to the Internet, freedom of entry and exit. It is limited for obvious reasons, but it still theoretically exists. As soon as they cancel it, it will be a complete totalitarian system. But as far as information and propaganda are concerned, it was an absolute lack of freedom all quarter of a century. After the end of the war directly on the battlefield, it will take more than a decade to treat Russians from propaganda, experts say. An example of the aftermath of World War II started by Hitler's Germany showed that the aggressor had been washing away traces of genocide and the murders of entire nations for generations. The first treatment is our victory. The second step that should be taken is a so-called denazification. What Russia wanted to apply to Ukraine should be applied to their regime. Accordingly, this should be done through international tribunals. The regime itself has been condemned at the political level at the legislative level in the Russian Federation, this sin must also be condemned. This will be a very long process. 
And of course, as experts say, it will be necessary to get rid of the symbols of this war. Among them is the notorious letter Z, used today by Russian propagandists. Reported by Marina Stepanenko, Larissa Zubenko, UATV News.